Do you want to produce a professional, high quality live stream with one person, aka you? Well, the Stream Deck for live streaming can transform your entire production. If you're doing interviews, you're putting overlays and frames in your videos, if you're sharing your screen, if you have anything outside of just a single camera, then the Stream Deck will be a huge asset to your studio to give you a push button, simple, professional video studio. In this video, I'm going to tell you what the Stream Deck even is, how it can make a one-person production so much simpler and easier to get great results. And I will actually show you and give you a demo of how to actually set it up. Now, I'm going to be using Ecamm for the purposes of this demo, but you can use it with other softwares as well. By the way, if you're new here, please do type new in the comments. I would love, love, love to meet you. And if you are new, then you don't know me. Hi, I'm Luria Petrucci from Livestreaming Pros. We help you create professional live video that's uniquely you. So what is a Stream Deck exactly? Well, at its core, functionality for live streaming specifically, it's a camera switcher. I can go to my Abby cam, Abby, say hi. <laughs> and by the way, I am using the Stream Deck right now to switch between cameras. And that, she's a, a wonderful guest, it's very, very exciting. But also it can do everything else you do in your production. So if you have something that you want to throw on screen like this and have a little oomph and pizzazz, if you want to have call to actions, this is where we teach you how to do everything step by step and create your dream video studio. If you want to share your screen, you can do that all with the switch of buttons that is through a physical device so that you have that tactile feedback that allows you to be a one person production and get all of the fancy stuff with simple ease of use. Oh, and don't forget, you can start and stop your stream. You can record and pause your stream all from the stream deck. You even got a mute button. There you go. So this is a wonderful device that gives you CNN quality capabilities. As long as you're using it in conjunction with a software, what we would call a level three software like Ecamm for Mac. And I do recommend Ecamm and Stream Deck together. And then also if you're using vMix, uh, we recommend actually the X keys together with vMix on a PC. So we do separate the hardware physical device with the software because we find that they work better together in those combinations. So vMix on a PC with the X keys device that is a camera switcher and also the Ecamm with Stream Deck. So I wanna be very clear about that because those combos do work spectacularly well together. And to be 100% clear about this, because this causes some confusion, Ecamm, the software, and Stream Deck, the hardware, these are two separate devices. They do not do the same thing. Ecamm is the software, and that is where you are controlling and setting up your live stream graphics, the PIP, the overlay that we're using here, the call to actions, the video, the graphics, all of the different things we are setting up in Ecamm the software first, and then Stream Deck, this physical hardware device, connects to Ecamm the software and reads what you have done in Ecamm already then allows you to control everything with the buttons in a physical tactile environment. And this is important because it allows you to not mess with the software, click around, playing with your mouse. You have everything in control on one screen right here where you can actually know with with memory, right, of where certain buttons are. And occasionally you can look down at them, but again, you get that CNN quality production right here. Only these buttons. <laughs> 
Now there are two sizes. This is the 32 key size, and then there's a 15 key size. I prefer the bigger one because I do a lot in my productions. If you're keeping it it's super simple, you can get away with the smaller one, but beware, we find that most people who buy the smaller one eventually want to upgrade, so you might as well start with what you're gonna go to eventually once you get good at live streaming and you want to add more and more and more. So up to you and your budget, but that's what we find our students wind up doing. All right, are you ready to see how to set it up? Let's do this. So when you first open up Ecamm after installing the Stream Deck app, you'll get a notification from Ecamm asking if you want to install the Stream Deck profile. It's pretty easy if you just click install, it will fill out the Stream Deck buttons for you. But we're not going to do that just yet. I want to show you how to actually build it out yourself because you really want to customize your experience based on your personal preferences, your show flow, your production, right? So in the Stream Deck app, what you're going to do is go to the bottom right corner and click more actions. And then all you need to do is go to the search bar, type in Ecamm, and you'll get the option to install. So go ahead and install it or you can install it from the prompt in Ecamm. But here's the thing, when you allow it to install the profile, you'll get a predetermined map. And I'll just go ahead and do that now just to show you what that looks like. Now in the Stream Deck, we have various scenes that we can set up. We have different volume controls. We have the things that they have predetermined that you might need. However, like I said, I actually like to set this up completely from scratch, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna delete this, and by magic of video editing, we're gonna come back to a clean slate. When you just install Ecamm Live into Stream Deck, and you don't allow it to install the entire profile, which is that entire map, then you will still get a few options preloaded, and that's easy to deal with. So, what this is, is a run scene button. And this is um, where you tie Ecamm Live, the scenes that you've created, into Stream Deck. So these two things are working together. So when you choose to run scene, and I'm going to name the scene the first scene in my Ecamm folder, the LSP production, which is the countdown timer. So that's what this looks like. So when I click the button in Stream Deck, it will actually play this. So we're gonna name it Countdown, or if you wanna get shorter with it, maybe Timer. And then what you're choosing is you're going from the drop-down box and you're looking for the LSP folder, Countdown Timer. See how these two things match between Stream Deck and Ecamm. And now it's going to pre-populate what the last thing is it sees as that timer. And so it's kind of giving you a graphical interface on the Stream Deck itself. And now we'll program the next scene, which of course is the main camera that I'm on right now. So in my Stream Deck, what I do is I kind of go down the line here in relation to my scenes and how my production flow is set up in Ecamm. So for me, the countdown timer, then Next up is going to be the main camera because the countdown timer automatically moves to the main camera. So let's set that, main cam. And then we choose from the drop down box, main camera, boom, ready to go. Okay, now we have the Abby cam, so we need to set that up. We've got the run scene. We are going to do Abby. Choose Abby Cam. She's so cute. All right. Okay, so now we have three scenes. And of course, there are a lot more scenes in my production, but I'm not going to bore you with all of the run scenes. The run scene feature in Stream Deck is to match your Ecamm scenes that you've set up, the collection of assets uh, that run an entire thing that you need to point put out there for your audience, right? A video or a camera 
or a countdown timer with music and overlays and all of that stuff. So now let's look at what else you have in the Ecamm Live profile so that you can have a better production. One of my favorites is of course the mute button. Uh, how often do we get uh, you know, a coughing fit or you wanna sneeze or something happens and you're like, oh, like let's mute that. So the mute button is really, really super awesome to have at a, like without even having to look. So you want this in a position on your stream deck that you don't have to look. You can just feel the stream deck itself and you can be like, oh, bottom right corner, bottom left corner. I don't know my left or my right and then it goes to unmute, right? So you know whether you're muted or unmuted. The other thing that you definitely want is a go live button right here at the top. I usually put this at the top right corner of my stream deck so that I can easily end the show when I'm done. So it reads finish, I'm in record mode, so it matches the finish button here with the finish button there. But when I'm not recording, it would actually read go live or record depending on which destination I have set inside of Ecamm. So it is dynamic. It's reading what is happening in Ecamm and translating that to Stream Deck, which is why it's so powerful. If you are in a record only mode, then you can use the pause button and put that on your stream deck so that you can pause during your recordings. This is wonderful for if you have to get up, do something, if you're doing a demo like I am here, it, there's often times where you're like fiddling around with things to get it right on screen. So the pause feature can actually be really great for editors as long as you don't have two cameras running. <laughs> I made that mistake once. All right, so then we've got the run scene, of course. Um, you can play around with all of these options. I'm showing you the ones that I love. Show hide overlay is something that you could do if you're not setting up scenes in your uh, Ecamm setup. So you could run a production with just a main camera and then show hide overlays but that's not my preference, so I don't use that one. You could, oh, the camera switcher. I love the camera switcher. So during my countdowns, I actually use the, the camera switcher to um, move back and forth between my video and Abby's video. So I'm not switching scenes, right? I'm not going from main camera to the Abby cam, but in my countdown timer, Of course, there's music going on in the countdown timer, right? But I've lessened that. Now I need to be able to not move to a different camera because that will remove my countdown timer. What I need to be able to do is go back and forth between Abby Cam and my video while we're dancing during the countdown timer. Of course, Abby doesn't tend to dance very well during the countdown timer, but they like seeing her anyway. <laughs> so that is what I use the camera switcher for. So in Stream Deck, I'll set up each individual camera I might go to so that underneath my overlays, I can switch that camera without actually changing scenes. So we will go Abby, and that's the uh, C920. And then we'll do another camera switcher main, and that's my uh, main camera, this, this one that you're seeing here. And so then during the countdown timer, I can just hop back and forth, boom, 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 boom. The last one that I love, love, love to have in my production is the hide last comment. So uh, we can put that pretty much anywhere we want. Uh, I usually put that in a corner. So the hide comment means that when I'm pushing live comments out, then all I have to do instead of Xing the comment out on Ecamm, like you do here. So like if you have a live comment out in your production while you're live, you have to kind of click this X button and that takes extra concentration. Instead, when I have a comment out on screen, all I have to do is click hide button, 
on my Stream Deck. And of course, I never ever have to look down at the Stream Deck because I know by touch where that is on the device. If you're into vanity, then you could have a viewers option. And while you're live, it will count how many viewers you have. It'll be a dynamic uh, view of your viewership so that you can see that from your Stream Deck. Okay, now I've gone ahead and set up the entire simple production that I have with Ecamm inside of Stream Deck. I've moved a couple of things around. The countdown timer moved over here because it's actually not in my main flow. I click the countdown timer before I ever even go live. And so then I start with my main cam, my Uniquely You intro, the actual video intro. I have the mute button. I have the Abby cam. I have some different uh, variations of the camera and frames right here. And then I have my dance uh, moment, my dance break that I always go to as we end the show. And then I have my call to action. So this entire column would be call to actions. Now here's the cool thing about Stream Deck. I don't run just one show. You'll notice here in my Ecamm, I have an LSP folder, but I also have a Go Live Now folder and a Go Live Now interview folder. So my main Go Live Now production that I do solo is different than my interview setup. So I have all of those separated. And what's really cool is that in Stream Deck, you can actually set up folders as well so that you're not trying to run three different productions on a single screen. So in the Stream Deck section of your Stream Deck software, you're going to create folder. And so what you can do here is just drag and drop, name the folder, we'll call this GLN Solo. And then we can double click right on Stream, or you can single click right on Stream Deck and you have a whole nother blank screen to deal with. Now you can start loading in all of your different buttons and your pause button, your run scenes, you can fill it up with a completely different production line than you did in the main screen. So you can have as many folders as you can fit on this main screen and you can set it up exactly how it'll please you best. For our clients and for myself, I actually set up, you know, a webinar folder, a you know, go live now, a go live now interview, an LSP uh, show, uh, maybe uh, just a regular interview show or a super simple production for recording only. So I will set up all of those different scenarios so that it's super easy for me to use my stream deck as I'm live or recording. How super simple was that? I love, love, love how easy it is to use Stream Deck along with Ecamm. You can see if there is compatibility with any app you use. So it can be a really amazing device in a variety of different ways, not just for live streaming. So I love, love, love that about it. I can't say enough about how easy it is to use the Stream Deck. So it has become a device that I cannot live without. And to put it into context, this is a level four device. The four levels of live streaming, we talk about in depth in the video that is in the description, uh, but at a level three, you're using software like Ecamm or vMix. And then the level four takes it up a notch to have that push button simple production. So Stream Deck allows you to have that highest level of streaming capability when it comes to your studio setup. Now, if you wanna go a little deeper into this conversation, in this video called The Run of Show, I actually go into depth about how you organize your scenes in Ecamm so that it makes production sense, so that it flows well according to what you're trying to say and do in your production, and that matches what you're trying to do with your stream deck. So we covered that a little bit in this video, but if you you want to dive deeper, you'll learn a whole lot more. So go check that video out.